Hello and welcome. This is Amhara TV and you are watching Apps of the Week. Coming up first is Grand Stories. Stay tuned. Idio Arab Relations researcher Zahid Zaid and Al Harari said Sudan's request to mediate between the government of Ethiopia and the tourist PLF is surprising after it stabbing Ethiopia in the back while the nation was engaged in enforcement efforts in the north. Brahan Workana will give us the detail of this story. An exclusive interview with the Ethiopian news agency, the researcher acquired how can the government of Sudan be confident in its request to mediate after stabbing Ethiopia in the back by occupying its land while the nation was engaged in the law enforcement operation in the north. Ethiopia believes that the prevalence of peace in neighboring countries is vital to create peace in Ethiopia. The researcher noted, recalling Ethiopia's unreserved efforts to the peaceful resolution of the Sudanese political challenges that was accomplished with great success. Zahir said the relationship of Ethiopia and Sudan is multifaceted and intrinsically interdependent between the people of the two countries. Unfortunately, some political elites in Sudan have been trying to tarnish the relationship between the two countries and the recent aggression carried out by the government of Sudan on Ethiopian territory could be cited as one instance. The researcher regretted the Sudanese incursion into Ethiopian territory in December 2020, describing it a stab in the back unexpected from the brotherly state of Sudan. Moreover, Sudan requested to mediate the conflict between the terrorist group TPLF and federal government, which is like trying to mix water with oil. The researcher stated, adding that this is unexpected as the group has already been designated as terrorist for its heinous acts by the House of People's representatives. He elaborated the government of Ethiopia would not negotiate with a terrorist group as it is also the practice of several countries across the world. Furthermore, the researcher said the request by itself is surprising as the government of Sudan has already inflicted damage on Ethiopia by illegally occupying its territories and remaining rigid to the calls being made by the government of Ethiopia to maintain the status quo. Zahid explained that the people of the two countries described themselves as sister countries stressing the need for the current administration in Sudan to realize the eternal bond and strive to further cement this century's old relationship. The researcher pointed out that if Sudan, Eritrea, Djibouti, Somali, Kenya and South Sudan became prosperous, Ethiopia will also benefit a lot too. It is to be recalled that Press Secretary of the Prime Minister Office, Bilen Isium, dismissed the possibility of Sudan's mediation request. She described the relationship with Khartoum as a little bit tricky and said trust should be the basis of any mediation but this was eroded especially following the Sudanese army incursion into Ethiopian territory. Displaced people sheltered in the city of Amahara regional state said they have been subjected to inhuman treatment abuse by the terrorist group TPLF which attacked neighboring states of Amahara and Afar. Let's have more from Fikradi Zodu. The youths living in Dese city are providing food for the displaced people from the North Wallow zone. A woman displaced from Malamata, Truhas Kabede, said she was displaced because of the war launched by the terrorist TPLF. It is to be recalled that the terrorist TPLF started sending human wave of civilian fighters into Afar and Amhara regions to attack, kill, rape and loot the community's property, following the enactment of the unilateral ceasefire. More than 300,000 people have so far been displaced. Truha said she fled Alamada to save her life empty-handed and does not know the whereabouts of her 16-year-old son. According to her, the group does not only kidnap young people to deploy them into war, but also loots and destroys property. She said, we are here because the TPLF hunted us down. I left my home fearing that they would kill me and my son. I arrived here in Dese by traveling on foot from Alamada, but I lost my 16-year-old son because they were shooting at us from behind. Now I don't know if my son is killed or not. The other displaced person from Hara town, Yimer Getacho, said all kinds of crimes are perpetrated by the terrorist TPLF group. According to him, residents of the town fought hard to defend it from the TPLF for 15 days, but they were attacked with heavy weapons. Yimer added, the terrorist groups killed many, kidnapped youths and looted properties. Yimer said, I am from Hara and I arrived here after a lot of suffering. My six children as well as my pregnant wife also came here after days of journey on foot. 
We don't want to continue living here. We have to regroup ourselves and destroy the terrorist group. Another displaced woman from Guba left to Warada, Balad Wasmara, said the terrorist group has shown its brutality by raping women, shooting young people and looting property. According to a psychologist, the terrorist DPLF has been exposing children in Tigray for psychological pains by using humanitarian aid as a weapon to forcefully deploy the kids in war. Ababa Burhani has prepared the full account of this story. It has been widely reported that the terrorist TPLF is actively recruiting and deploying children into war, which is international war crime. Psychologist Mahir Dadi told the Ethiopian news agency that the terrorist group is forcing mothers to send their children into war by frightening them that they would not get humanitarian food aid if they attempted to resist. She added the terrorist group is committing a crime by recruiting and deploying kids into warfare, causing them for dreadful psychological sufferings. She said that the group demonstrated its nature of cruelty by committing such monstrous crime against innocent children by recruiting them to its provocative acts aimed at dismantling the country. She stated that the group has been carrying out a destructive activity by mercilessly letting a new generation integrate to days and psychological sufferings. <laughs> This is like a genocide being committed on the people in Tigray. The group is engaged in wiping out the new generation by deploying children into war. The psychologist underlined that the pertinent bodies in the international community should take the necessary measure on the group to stop deploying child soldiers and make it accountable for this international war crime. She also urged Ethiopians to end these heinous acts of the terrorist TPLF group in a united spirit in order to save children in Tigray and ensure the national integrity of Ethiopia. Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed said that if Ethiopians courageously stand together to confront and resist the efforts being carried out by Western diplomacy and media to forcefully tweet the hands of Ethiopia, the terrorist DPLF would be dismantled once and for all. Abiy Burhani will provide us the detail. The Premier, in his statement issued before yesterday, stated that the Western diplomacy and media have continued efforts to echoing the voices of the terrorist group. Noting that Ethiopia in its history had gone through several challenges and predicaments. However, the Premier added that its courageous people had not sat and waited, instead paid their lives to confront the challenges, to dishonorably defeat the enemies of their country. Abi stated that with these heroic sacrifices of its gallant children, Ethiopia's enemies had fallen while the nation has been able to confidently stand in the face of this world. He recalled that a number of nations in the world had experienced similar conspiracies that created the threats of disintegration in one time or another. The Prime Minister said that countries like Yugoslavia, Syria, Somalia and Libya had fallen with these conspiracies. However, he added that Germany, Japan, Korea and Vietnam are some of the pioneering nations that successfully thwarted the crises they had gone through by confronting them with strong unity. He stated, currently, these nations are among the key models for their economic might, modern political system, technological capabilities and civilized social values. The Premier said these countries had been tested by the dreadful and most challenging predicaments, however, surpassed them and become prosperous now by using the challenges as a springboard. He also indicated that there are lots of other countries in the world that had encountered similar situations like the one that we have now been facing. He said that there are no challenges and predicaments that Ethiopia had never been through in its history. 
adding that the nation was able to reserve and overcome the challenges wisely with unity. Whatever huge are the threats coming from the outside world or challenges arise from inside the country, when there is a strong unity among the people of Ethiopia, challenges had never been beyond their capabilities. He said that the terrorist TPLF is now making its last effort and has been lamenting for help, losing hope. The Prime Minister stated that the enemies of Ethiopia have been wagging war on two fronts, one in war front and the other by diplomatic front, and called all concerned about the survival of Ethiopia to join and confront the two fronts by refraining from conspiracy analysis and unnecessary fear. He said that diplomacy and foreign relations are political game guided by the principle of give and take. And he added that there is no doubt that Ethiopia will benefit the most from the right line of diplomacy. Furthermore, he stated on contrary, diplomatic relations conducted by endangering the national interest and sovereignty of our country might bring temporary relief, but its long-term negative consequences are significant. Abi underscored that the government is doing its part to prevent this. It will continue to do so. According to him, the traditional diplomatic relations is not the major way to create influence. For instance, the Western world uses the international media outlets to pressurize nations that they are interested by conducting enormous campaign. The Premier noted that when Ethiopia began to resist their pressures, they will launch destructive information campaign to tarnish our image for they are immensely capable in this regard and they have a wide range of media tools and advanced power to misrepresent the people of the world. He stressed the need for the work together and harmony to counter the media and diplomatic pressure on Ethiopia adding that Ethiopians must take advantage of all the opportunities they have to defend the campaign open. Furthermore, he stressed that it is necessary to resist and defend the news that harms the country on social and mainstream media at home and abroad, individually and collectively. Training soldiers at Tolai Training Center say they are ready to bravely evacuate the TPLF terrorist group and defend Ethiopia's sovereignty. Brahan Workana is for more. A group of artists drawn from National Theatre and Oromia Culture Center have presented their work for soldiers who are taking basic military training in Tolai Training Center. On the occasion, soldiers stated that they have completed their preparedness to fight the TPLF terrorist group rushing to dismantle the nation and threaten the lives of the people by now. We are here to discharge our national responsibility. We have a responsibility to sustain the legacy of our forefathers. Patriotism requires sacrifice even up to this. So that's why we are here now. <laughs> I'm so happy to get this opportunity to keep the sovereignty of our country, Ethiopia. I will do my best to keep the dignity of my country. Our forefathers had destroyed their enemies without having modern firearms. However, these days, we have modern armaments, so we will fight our enemies and keep the sovereignty of our country. Even if we have no modern firearms, we will fight for our country with sword and shield like what our forefathers did. We have decided to keep the unity of our country regardless of religion, language, ethnicity and culture. I'm ready to die for my country. We have voluntarily came here to fight against the terrorist group. Our trainers have been giving us the required training. We will also be loyal to our country, even up to sacrificing our lives. As to me, I will serve my country and struggle to destroy the junta. 
The soldiers who are taking basic military training stated that the training is important to revert whatever kind of threat on the national sovereignty of the country. The basic military training which is being given is very important to defend whatever kind of enemies which threaten the national sovereignty. Each and every kind of training is being given, keeping its schedule into consideration. Therefore, this training is important to build our capacity and enhance the psychology of the army. The basic military training which is being given is interesting more than anything. What we have been hearing before joining the training center and what we are training is completely different. My families do not have awareness about military and military training. However, the training is interesting and it makes me to have patriotic feeling to my country. We are training regardless of ethnicity, religion and race. The trainers on the occasion stated that the trainees have the spirit of Ethiopia and committed to safeguard the sovereignty of the nation from any kind of internal and external provocations. As you have seen, the military members are taking the training receiving the mission of the government and the public. They are taking challenging basic military training now. Therefore, the training has tremendous role to fight anti-peace forces internally and externally. It is a training which answers the national call of the country. On the occasion, a state minister of Ministry of Peace, Wakanash Baru, Sine government officials of Ministry of Defense and artists have attended the concert which initiates military's patriotic feeling so as to safeguard the country's sovereignty from internal and external traitors. According to the historian Tayebo Gale, the recently issued report of Amnesty International reflects partiality and bias of the organization. Fakradi Zaudu has prepared a story. In an exclusive interview with Ethiopian News Agency, Taye said the report exposed its partiality by omitting many truths. He added, Though well aware of the cause of the conflict and who triggered the war, it did not want to reveal this fact. He noted that TPLF clique triggered the war by committing heinous act on the northern command of the Ethiopian National Defense Force stationed in Tigray last November. The historian noted that this had ever been committed in any country. Moreover, Amnesty International chose to ignore the massacres committed in Maikadra, Humera, and Afar by the terrorist group. Besides, Taya recalled that this same group committed massacre on Arturian refugees sheltered in Tigray region. He pointed out that all these inhuman acts were omitted from the Amnesty International, proving its partiality. Taya elaborated that, though collecting huge information under a stable condition is necessary to issue such a report, the institution gathered information from only one side and issued a report that lacks balance. According to the historian, issuing such a report in the midst of the national call is aimed at thwarting the objective of the TPLF clique to disintegrate the country is part of the campaign launched against Ethiopia. The scholar finally called on the people of Ethiopia to stand in unison and ensure to stop the proxy war aged against the country. Hassan Razak, Al Jazeera correspondent from Desi Town, reported that officials in the city of Desi in the Amhara region said 55,000 displaced people fleeing the military attack by the terrorist TPLF militants need urgent assistance. Let's get more from Brhan Workana. He reported that the officials have appealed to local and international relief organizations to provide support to those displaced people who are still pouring in due to the continuing military attack by the TPLA militants. According to Al Jazeera, Hussein Nuru takes a piece of plastic as a bear to which he comes every day. He was displaced from his village between the regions of Amhara and Tigray due to the military attack by the TPLA militants. The report added that Hussein is no exception in this shelter center and the majority of its residents are in difficult conditions. Hussein Nuru, a displaced, interviewed by Al Jazeera, said 
he was displaced because of the war and he came on foot. We encounter great difficulties on the way and here too. As you can see, these are our conditioners. We were gathered together with our money, clothes or a family. The report added this reality prompted officials in the city of Desi to issue distress calls, noting that thousands of displaced people need urgent assistance due to their lack of the most necessities of life. Deputy Mayor of Desi City in Amhara region told to Al Jazeera that the majority of the displaced people are women and children. He said the federal government provided support but it does not cover it. To date, we have the arrival of 55,000 displaced people, and this is beyond the capacity of the city. I call on the international community to provide a helping hand. Al Jazeera reported that until now the largest support for the displaced came from the local community in the city and volunteers who came from different areas to provide aid and assistance. Adris Bashir, member of the Endowment Council in the city, told Al Jazeera that it was difficult for them to ignore the crisis of the displaced people. They are our people, so we made a donation campaign and we brought these supplies according to our capabilities. Hassan Razak reported that outside the shelters, some of the displaced live with their relatives and some of them are in rented houses, which has caused great pressures on the city's ability to cover consumer needs. The report underscored that the city is considered the largest city on the border between the regions of Amhara and Tigray, where the military confrontations are taking place. Therefore, it received the largest share of the movement of displaced people. And the next is the view. Being an Ethiopian for me is greatness. Ethiopia is the origin of everything. It is the source of civilization and cradle of human being. The country has and had great place. So, it is my honor to be an Ethiopian. I have visited many places in the world. There is no any other country that has cultural value as like as ours. <laughs> Ethiopian identity has a sense of never give up in it. When you see the history of the country, its people have not been defeated by any enemy. So this is one manifestation of the country. It is the cooperative endeavor of Ethiopians that is clearly seen and existed for long. For instance, the victory of Adwa never belonged to a single group of people. It is the role of everyone. Even some of Ethiopians were unable to reach on the battlefield on time before the victory. But on their way to the front, they were praying to God, more or less. All Ethiopians took part on the war. Similarly, I wish this situation to exist today for Ethiopia. The Holy Bible verse that say, Can an Ethiopian change his skin or the leopard his spots? is becoming more clear for me. It is mixed color faces of people that represent an Ethiopian. Its land is similar. The sun of Ethiopia is also the same. It is not too hot 
or vice versa. The sin itself is diversified. <laughs> Ethiopia is a school of thought. For instance, Jomo Kenyatta of Africa in Kenyan's Mao Mao struggle provoked the people whether to get freedom through struggle as Ethiopians or give up to slavery. So Ethiopia is a symbol of freedom for others. So it is a philosophy to find the path to freedom. <laughs> To your surprise, Ethiopia is a country in which peaceful power transition was made between the Zagwe and Solomonic dynasty. This was done through round table discussion without any conflict. This was done before America was found. However, we are unable of considering what our forefathers did. <laughs> Above all things, Ethiopianism is a philosophy of living together in a religious diversity. When you see Christianity, Ethiopians brought Ark of the Covenant before Christianity entered into this country. This shows us there was the practice of the Old Testament in Ethiopia. It is through Ethiopians themselves who were in the event of the birth of Jesus and his baptism, Christianity has come and expanded in this country. In Islamic religion too, there are unique stories. These two religions live in love and harmony. Muslims participate in building churches and Christians in building mosques in Ethiopia. This is a country that the world has got lesson how to live in love and togetherness while there is religious differences. After 1983 Ethiopian calendar, the sense of being an Ethiopian has faced problems. We have seen individuals who are getting ashamed to call the name of Ethiopia. Then there was undermining the history of the country at governmental level. Intentionally and strategically, there were tasks that target to abolish the sense of being an Ethiopian. At university level, history subjects have been rejected. There were conspiracies to bring the issue of flag, Ethiopia and identity into question. There were a trial to disregard the country that had been built by the involvement of every people. They have created the narrative of the separation and the separating. This was a strategic approach of fascists. Ethiopians won this idea in 1933. It was a strategy of divide and rule. But Ethiopians of that time achieved in rejecting that thought successfully. Then this evil thought has come again in 1983 and more evils have been done strategically. <laughs> I believe that we Ethiopians should consider one thing. We should understand what it was before and how we are living now. 
There are others who have got benefit on efforts we ourselves have made. There should be activities we ought to carry out to be out of from these situations. We are better to evaluate our manifestations in a long journey we have covered in the past years. Accepting diversity in this country is very essential for our unity. It is only accepting one another that will bring better outcome. Trying to be supreme over others will cost us much. <laughs> ከላይ የሀገሮች የደረሱበት መስመር ለምሳሌ አለ ስለ ኮሪያዎች ብናወራ ኮሪያ ማን ነው ይሄ ሳውዝ ኮሪያ ፎር ኢንስተንስ ሳውዝ ኮሪያ ኤ ካንትሪ ኢቨን ዊ ሰፖርትድ ኢት ቢፎር 50 ኢየርስ ሃዝ ቢገን ቼንጂንግ ኢትስ ኢኮኖሚ አፍተር ኢትስ ፒፕል ሪችድ ኮንሰንሰስ ኦን ፓትሪዮቲዝም ቱጌዘርነስ ኮኦፕሬሽን ፕሮስፔሪቲ ኤንድ ሼርድ ጎል ናው ዚስ ካንትሪ ሃዝ ሃድ ሂውጅ ኢኮኖሚ ኢን ዘ ግሎብ unity and togetherness can be built from the basement at family level ara betesab ust mahabersab emi ganabaw be betesab betesab no betam qulfu hizb ande ko hono no one can win united people you may suppress some group of people with a particular political ideology however you cannot do that on a united people to pose your thoughts forcefully We Ethiopians have shared identity. Let's get cooperated on situations that really will benefit us and let us respect one another on our differences. There should come global thinking beyond national thinking. Let's bring the idea of Ethiopia at international level for it is a new ideology. Ethiopia is made the center of Africa. This comes from the truth that there is a thought that has been got from Ethiopia to be center for Africans. Ethiopia was the center of freedom and real identity of Africans. That was a result of cooperation and it should come back again. <laughs> When we stand at the top, we can have broad view. Whenever we get ourselves down from the top view, we will have narrow scope. Beyond I myself and yourself, there is the issue of our country. We should consider what will be the fate of the coming generation. So I don't believe national issues identity sustaining the country and solving our problems will be point of bargaining. What will protect us will be our cooperation and togetherness in order to avoid threats of our unity. Now onwards what i request the government is that it should abstain itself from forming race based or political parties based governmental structure in place it should base on knowledge oriented approach so i request merit based governmental system to be installed hagerun dilmatin yadabr ichilal uqat allo yetebalo keetum bota keetum keetum ከመንግስት በላይ ወይም ከፖለቲካው መራድ በላይ ትልቅ ድርሻ ያለው ባለቤት የሆነ ህዝብ አለ there are people who have great share than political parties prophet muhammad once said help the victim and the attacker people asked him on how does it mean by supporting the attacker he replied by stopping him from attacking there should be people that can stop other people who are trying to destroy this country our unity is our strength the predator killed the one that is separated from its group so whenever you are out of from the unity you do have an opportunity of being attacked but when there is unity your enemy will have no power on you yello behebret ust yallaw begna fiyel adellem minekaw siwotat nekalle 
አሁን ለኢትዮጵያ ወገኖች የምመከረው ነገር what i want to advise for ethiopians is that let us not sacrifice our interest for donations the worst thing is asking for aid we should find ways to bring ourselves out of begging this can be achieved through hard work if we go in this way we will have better ethiopia for us and our children ከዛ እንድንወጣን ውጥረት ማድረግ ያለብን በእኛ ምክነ ተበብሰው ትልቅ ጋር ያለበት we artists have great responsibility these days we are not at the front they are the people that are currently leading art we should be one step forward from the audience the artists can show what does the country look like and the people accept them this was observed before artists went to war fronts they did great things traveling into different countries this was examples of being one step forward we artists ought to do this today otherwise we will be accountable tomorrow it also mankat machal allebet nege nitayekal kulli gize benya sport ne tru misale listachu lemalla wogenoch sidini olympic la yanen yemesale talaq bil yamatanu let me give you one example from our running race the magnificent victory at sydney olympic made through our integrated effort not individual personal skill that victory is not done again within the past 20 years it can be repeated when we stand together at you wish malat ahun yallon load kalde gefno men load anchilum if we do not support the current reform we will not be changed we should reach on some destination we should support it together it is not about supporting the government it is supporting the change we should stand together to help in overcoming false narrations and to correct improper legacies of the failed administration we should also criticize this government the support shouldn't only focus on appreciating we need to be out from the miserable life of this country this can be then when we all Ethiopians stand together and build our country kullachinum tababra agarachinin megembat sinichilla kenya odia